There is a massive double standard here in Canada where if you or I commit the slightest of crimes, we're going to probably have the biggest penalties. But if you're a repeat offender, then you get let off. But here's a caveat. If you're a politician or an elected official and you commit even treason, there's no punishment. And it doesn't just end there. They are manipulating. Our government is manipulating interest rates with the Bank of Canada. And there's going to be a massive update tomorrow. But the tensions going into this decision are incredibly high. And there's a whole lot more news to cover in this video. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you guys to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. And here we go. Buckle up. This is going to be a great one. So do you guys remember Tamara Leach, right? Just a, a small name who ran a massive convoy. I'm kidding. Tamara's very famous here in Canada. She has this to say on X. I'm still banned from downtown Ottawa. I still have no I still have no contact orders with my good friends Danny and Tom. I'm still banned from exercising my rights of freedom of speech and assembly. I'm still banned from moving away from my current address. She has to have her devices checked to make sure that she's being a good girl. They called her a racist a terrorist a criminal an uh, ideology motivated violent extremist and a danger to society chris barber and tamara are currently enduring the longest mischief trial of all time all while this is happening from our politicians so wiretap media shared and that was in response to this original post here wiretap media shared this breaking christian freeland refuses to give a de definitive answer on why canadian mps who committed crimes that constitute treason haven't been arrested but she is glad that bill c70 will provide her government with the tools to cover up their crimes I'm glad our government has put forward the strongest measures of any Canadian government when it comes to foreign interference, giving us, our law enforcement bodies, the tools to act. Kind of funny and kind of hypocritical because foreign interference only comes into play when it's uh, something that doesn't benefit them directly. But when they have foreign interference that benefits the liberals or Justin Trudeau and their radical ideologies, then they just kind of turn their head. Let's take a look at this video. Good morning. I just want to ask about the NCOP report, um, and my question is for Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland. Uh, the report describes behavior that might constitute treason, and yet we've seen no charges. Does that concern you? Uh, thank you for the question. By the way, this is mainstream media. This isn't like some random person out there with an iPhone and a microphone. This isn't Rebel News. I don't even believe it's True North. Not to say that they aren't credible news, but they're alternative media. This is right from the mainstream media saying, hey, your cabinet is guilty of treason. Why aren't they being held accountable? It's no longer a conspiracy, folks. It has gone mainstream. And still, nothing has happened. Uh... I want to start by thanking the committee uh, and the chair, David McGinty, for their very serious work on this. Um, our government takes foreign interference extremely seriously. I think your question is an important one because the findings of the committee are concerning and they should be. As the Minister of Public Safety has said, we have confidence in our law enforcement bodies to do their job. And I am glad that our government has now put forward the strongest measures of any Canadian government when it comes to foreign interference, giving us, giving our law enforcement bodies the tools to act. A deputy Prime Minister, you said that the fine. Madame la Vice Première Ministre, vous avez dit que c'est pré c'est. All law enforcement to do the work that they have to do. Um, I, I guess I would ask: Doesn't the public, though, have a right to know who these parliamentarians might be, especially as we approach an election sometime soon, possibly this year, possibly more, more than likely next year. Let me just say this. Um, <laughs> Dramatic pause. We take foreign interference really, really seriously. And I'm just going to speak personally for a minute. Um, having worked in authoritarian regimes myself, um, 
I take the fight in the world right now between democracy and dictatorship really, really seriously. And I think it's moving to a new level. And I think Canadians should not be naive about the fact that one of the objectives of authoritarians around the world is to undermine democracies. They want to make us think that democracy just doesn't work and they want to show their own people that they should accept authoritarian leadership because democracy isn't fit for purpose in the 21st century. Yikes, not a good look for Christian Freeland. And I kind of want to pass the question off to you guys, the viewers. How do you feel about that? Is uh, is this going to turn against them? Because when we look at the polls, it really seems like everything they do, every announcement that they make has negative repercussions, such as, I don't know, the conservatives going up one point. Hey, we'll take it one step at a time. Conservatives are sitting at 212 projected seats when they were at just 211 the other day with a bottom line of 185 and a top end of 233. It's looking good, folks. 99% winning the most seats and 99% likely winning majority government. So every, th every time the liberals open their mouths and spew nonsense, Canadians are now seen through that, especially that the mainstream media has joined that narrative. And uh, they're not just attacking, you know, and uh, providing non softball questions to uh, the liberals, such as Freeland and even Jack Mead and Justin Trudeau. They're also giving Pierre a bit more of a platform. Here's a video here that Pierre has titled The Math Disagrees with Justin Trudeau, because we all know that um, you can bend math and science to your will if you have enough power. From CHMC has said that Canada needs 5.8 million houses to restore the housing affordability. Liberals say that they have that already in the budget to be focused on the um, the housing and affairs for the Canadians, which you disagree. Why do you disagree and what's your plan? Okay, I don't disagree. The math disagrees. They've promised they're going to build, so they promised they're going to double home building. Their own housing agency said since they made that promise, home building has gone down and that it will go down next year and the year after that. Look at my exchange with Trudeau in the House of Commons this week, last week. To get to 3.9 million, forget 5.9 million, to get to 3.9 million new homes by the scheduled deadline of 2031 that Trudeau promised, he needs to build 550,000 homes a year. I asked him six times in the House of Commons, are we going to build 550,000 homes this year? He wouldn't answer. Well, the truth is he's on track right now to building about 200,000 homes, not even half of what he's promised. So it's not a matter of me disagreeing. It's a mathematical fact. He's not delivering. It's a mathematical fact that nine years ago when I was housing minister, the average rent for a one bedroom was $973. Now it's 2,000. Right? The, the, these are the facts. So you can, has he spent a lot of money on housing programs? Yes. He spent $89 billion on housing affordability, and the result is that housing costs have doubled. The problem is he's putting the money into bureaucracy. Government bureaucrats don't build homes. Private sector builders do. Government bureaucrats are in the... This is called time travel economics, all right? He's devalued our currency. He's pretending. Justin Trudeau is pretending like our, our, our currency right now is worth what it was in 2018. I wish, I absolutely wish that was the case. Oh my goodness, our economy would be booming. It'd be thriving. But the reality is when you print a lot of money, when you put us in these massive deficits and insane amount of debt, our money becomes absolutely worthless. History, uh, what's that saying? History repeats itself. And it seems like we're on a repetitive path of other countries that have had an economic collapse, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is the one time it doesn't happen, right? Maybe, maybe this is the, the one time that it's just different. Trust me, bro. Trust me. That's the liberal logic. It's just ridiculous. The way. So we need to get the government bureaucracy out of the way and deliver fast, affordable permits to build the homes. 
One third of the cost of every newly built home in Ontario is government permits and taxes. One third. That's more than we spend on the labor to build the home. So we're spending more on the bureaucrats who don't build anything than we do on the carpenters, framers, plumbers, and electricians who build. Isn't that insane? Like when you buy a house, do you not find it incredible? You have this beautiful house. And you say, well, where did the money, I'm buying the house for, now it's a, say it's a million dollars. What does the million dollars go to? You know, you Which, by the way, a million dollar home back in like 2018 would have six bedrooms, four bathrooms, maybe a pool. It'd have multiple acres. Like if, if it's out of, you know, massive city like Toronto or Vancouver, right? Million dollar home was like, insane because you could get a five hundred thousand dollar you know single family home detached that was beautiful had the white picket fence it was awesome but to get that million dollar home it's like that home from home alone right like massive it can house an entire family plus in-laws like a bunch of room like massive open concept million dollars now does not get you even half of that not even half. it gets you even in toronto a million dollars could get you like an 800 square foot condo. It's absolutely atrocious what's happening. And you go out into the middle of nowhere, million dollars will not get you a whole lot. Might get you three or four, maybe five bedrooms, a few bathrooms, a brand new build on a non acred lot, like just a standard subdivision. It's just, it's crazy what's going on, man. You break it down, lumber, materials. You think more money goes to people sitting in government offices, then goes to the people swinging the hammers, fitting the pipes, <laughs> framing the, 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 the lumber. It doesn't make sense. We need to cut the bureaucracy. And that's why my common sense plan will require cities free up land, speed up permits, cut development charges and fees as a condition of getting federal funds. If they don't hit my targets, they won't get their money. And you know what Canada kind of reminds me of right now? You, you remember those old infomercials or those old commercials where it was, you know, feed, feed an African family for like a dollar a day or $5 a day or whatever it was, and you donate, right? Million, millions of people would donate to this. And all of a sudden, it'd be like $100 million worth of donations. And by, by that pure logic... Like all of Africa would have been fed. If you take like how much money it takes to feed a person in Africa, according to their ads and how much money was actually sent, you'd think that that's the case. But for every, you know, dollar that gets sent to like Red Cross, let's say, like I'm just using them as, as, a, as a figurehead for this analogy, right? For every dollar that gets sent to Red Cross, or let's just say a hundred dollars for ease of things, what actually makes it to the cause there was a real statistic that came out. It was like $5 or, or $2, like a fraction of what you actually send makes it to the cause because it's, there's transportation costs. There's, uh, you know, people's salary that you have to pay CEOs, organizers, like that money goes to paying people to do the work. And then it, it trickles down a cost. That's kind of where we are in Canada, all these massive grants and stuff like that. And all these, these government deals, these multi-billion dollar deals, they don't actually make it. it it gets funneled like a reverse funnel right it gets funneled down and the people that are building get leftovers leftovers that's why you're not seeing anything because it's greed it's massive massive amounts of greed also devaluing our dollar plays a huge factor but massive amounts of greed has gone into this and people are, are seeing through the lies and uh all eyes are on the announcement tomorrow where the bank of canada is apparently supposed to according to different analysts supposed to uh reduce the rates personally i don't think so let's see what cp24 has to say talk federally here because a lot of people are looking at or banking on really an interest rate cut to more maybe a quarter yep. percent from the central bank it's a real hot potato plenty of political or governments getting ready to blame the feds here at this point this is so controversial really. so we thread our way through all the headlines and news stories what about foreign interference what somebody said this somebody did that what about uh, some video that you know pierre polyev puts up you want to know what's going to affect politics, what's going to change the course of politics in this country, what the Bank of Canada does. Right. If it lowers interest rates, it sends a signal that we turn the corner. Now, the Trudeau government is going to be able to say, see, we've managed this thing. And they're going to try to make that argument. The challenge, of course, is that traditionally, improving economic conditions 
leg a long time politically. Mm -hmm. So will he get an election? timetable that allows people to feel like they get those interest rates benefits? Will we get one tiny interest rate cut? Will we get a couple more? Will the governors indicate tomorrow maybe there's another one coming this year? So watch all of this. But I will tell you, I mean, at the end of the day, dollars drive votes. Yeah. Mm. The economy, more than anything else, dictates people's political choices, particularly when times are tough. I take your point about the lagging indicator, the lagging effect of this, but I think, you know, we talked to mortgage brokers and sort of real estate professionals. They say that there's a psychological impact that if you start seeing the rate go down, it at least sig symbolizes and signals to people, hey, this era of at least raising mm -hmm. rates is over. That could potentially be, you know, well, beneficial. You, we'll see, but and, it's got to flow that's, through. Yeah. That is the pie that J Justin Trudeau is hoping to get a fork full of, right? Yeah, like they're yeah. praying that that effect will occur. Yeah. Uh, all I would say is that if you look in, in the past, you know, the Conservatives did not get reelected in 91, 92. Yep, fair right? enough, yeah. But when the Liberals came in in 93, mm -hmm. they benefited from that improving right. economy. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes yeah. Yeah. the political timetable doesn't always line up mm -hmm. with the interest rate timetable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. Okay, see. I personally don't think that they're going to be lowering the interest rates. You've heard Justin Trudeau say many times that uh, the houses, he wants the houses to maintain and uh, retain their value. And I just, I don't think that that's going to happen. I think a lot of people are optimistic. I think that if there's another hold on the rates, it's just as good in the long term for these people as if they lower it right now, because I think eventually rates are going to have to go up in order to make a correction for what our money is worth. It doesn't make any sense. None of this makes sense. You can't possibly bring rates down now What our money's absolutely worthless, but it's not that I want rates to stay high. Absolutely not. I would like to be able to have my money mean a little bit more, but these people running the show have absolutely no idea what they are doing speaking of no idea what they are doing you have international students in brampton that are demanding automatic five-year post-grad work permit for all students no more racism we pay taxes let us work we pay taxes. Let us work. No more. Hate and racism. No more. Hate and racism. No more. Hate and racism. Student worker unity. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Well, I got to say that these protests really uh, lack any form of enthusiasm or uh, any form of genuine interactions or genuine hoorah i don't know why they're saying racism i don't know what's what's racist about what's happening there's absolutely no passion in this uh people are just pulling out the last straw out of the hat like the racist card like what racism dude it's immigration you, you believe me canada is not racist or else you wouldn't be here in the first place so i don't understand how anyone could possibly say end the racism give us work permits how about now i would never do this because why would I? But how about I go to India, stay there for a little bit, and then demand permanent citizenship? And then when they don't give it to me, why are you racist towards the white man? Let's see how that turns out. Probably not very well. And speaking of not very well, there's a little bit of backlash between what's going on here. This was, uh, this was sent to me by somebody who was tagged on Twitter. Uh, by somebody who follows me. Thank you very much for that. By the way, if, if you want to send me some uh, some videos, some links, highly recommend you go follow me on Twitter. I have less people that follow me there out of all the other platforms and I actually check my Twitter and so I'm more likely to see the notifications there. But Pierre Poliev disagrees with another conservative MP who wants to vote against same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage is legal and it will remain legal when I am Prime Minister, full stop, says Pierre Poliev. I don't think anyone really inherently has that big of an issue with that. Maybe some do. I think that when you're of, you know, legal age, you can do whatever the hell that you want. Where it becomes extremely controversial is when you start pushing this ideology on children and you're allowing children to get, you know, puberty blockers and things like that, but that's currently being addressed. It's they've done a good job of setting those rules in place in Alberta. And I think that you're going to start to see more of that uh, roll out across the country, but let's know what you guys think down below in the comments. Should same sex marriage stay in Canada? I think it would be pretty bad if we reverse that and went backwards in time. 
personally, it doesn't really bother me at all. Speaking of bother me, Christian Freeland, <laughs> let's take a look at what she has to say here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Known that democracy, democracy thrives in sunlight, and you've talked about the attacks on democracy. And it's already been talked about that Canadians have lost confidence in our electoral system and, and our institutions, in part because of this foreign interference uh, debate. Are you not concerned that by not releasing the names of the MPs who are involved and accused of what this committee is accusing them of, that you are further undermining confidence in the system? And why are we affording Absolutely. Um, so let me just start by saying I don't think Canadians have lost confidence in our democracy. Delusional. Completely delusional. Yes, Canadians have lost faith in our democracy. Full stop. Are Canadians concerned by foreign interference in Canada, by efforts to interfere in our democracy? Absolutely. And they should be. And I am too. And our government is as well. The fact that we are having this conversation, the fact that a cross-party committee has done this work, a cross-party co committee convened by the Prime Minister has done this work and published this work is a really important part of strengthening our democracy. And this is just one of, of many steps, of steps we've taken already in terms of strengthening our rules against foreign interference and the authorities we have to fight it. And, you know, we are going to keep on going. I do also want to emphasize um, for us all, this is a new and different threat from what Canada has experienced in the past. Uh, that's why we need new tools, and that is why our government is putting new tools in place. But we are very, very seized of this issue, even as we respect uh, the rules that are in place. Uh, when it comes to law enforcement and when it comes to confidentiality of security information. That's part of being a rule of law society too. Okay, but if we have potentially MPs still sitting in Parliament who this committee says wittingly participated with foreign governments to undermine our elections, does that not undermine Canadian confidence in our, in our Parliament and in our elections? Again, mainstream media question on mainstream media platform. This is not a softball. Like this is this the mainstream media is now turned on the liberals and I can't stop smiling. Oh my god, it makes me so happy. I think Canadians recognize how lucky we are to be Canadian and how strong our democracy is. That's disgusting. I think Canadians are smart and they recognize there is a very real threat. I think in the work of this committee, in the measures, the new and enhanced authorities our government has put in place, I think Canadians see that our government takes this threat seriously and is going to continue to act. And I do want to emphasize I see this as not a partisan issue at all. I see this as an issue of the core national interest and the core strength of Canada's democracy. That is how our government is going to act. That is absolutely disgusting. That's like your abuser saying, well, you should be thankful and lucky that at least I'm here to provide you the bare necessities. Like, it's just, what the hell is going on? I cannot believe that there are people out there that would support Christian Freeland, who is admitting, like, through not even answering the question, she's admitting how corrupt her and the government actually are are people need to wake up and the only way they could do that is if you the community does your due diligence by liking subscribing to the channel and helping the video get pushed out even further so more people who may not actually watch this channel or even watch politics in general would have that much more of a chance to see these types of videos to see this content so they can say wow i don't think i can vote for trudeau or freeland ever again and that's kind of 
the goal, one would say. That's where we're going to end the video, folks. On your way out, again, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.